Hello goddess and welcome to this week's Twin Flame Tuesday. I am definitely eager myself to hear this message as we continue along on this journey. I know where I am in my Twin Flame journey. It's um, it's definitely a different place. But I recognize that all it is is giving me the opportunity to choose. Am I going to focus on the way things are and the way things have been and on the things that don't feel good? Or am I going to choose to pivot and instead focus on the things that do? Welcome. My name is Rochelle Richard and I am the self-love empowerment coach here at empowerment experiences where we are looking for and finding our power all along this which is our self-love empowerment journey and for so many of us myself included this is very much a healing twin flames self-love empowerment journey i was a self-love empowerment coach before i discovered i was a twin flame and it's been quite an adventure. And this is what you're gonna have to find or allow yourself to see in your journey. That it's ever changing, it's ever evolving. And so does our connection with our counterpart. And that's the thing is we have to allow for that evolution to unfold. We have to allow for any shifts and changes and expansions, the growth we have to allow for it to take place. We have to embrace it. I mean, I suppose you don't have to, but that's what creates the struggle. That's what makes it so much more painful than what it needs to be. And now it's gonna be painful. It's cracking you open. It's making you to see things that you might have preferred to go your whole life not seeing again. The parts of you that need healing the most. That is what one of the greatest gifts of this twin flame connection. And I know as I am making my plans that of course, I mean, I was up last night organizing things. I mean, I've, I've always wanted that opportunity before I move to actually sort and organize all of my stuff. And that is my intention before I take off on this incredible vision that I have but it's knowing that it's coming to fruition it's like oh my goodness like oh my goodness this is really this is this is really happening and it makes me to think about union right how have you actually allowed yourself to be in that energetic space that vision of union with your divine with your divine counterpart, not just in your head, but I mean to actually embody it, to feel what it would feel like to see him under the best circumstances. But that's the kind of vision that you've got to have, period. For yourself and I know for me this vision totally has that because remember goddess I was already a self I was already doing this I was already empowering goddesses in their self-love empowerment journeys now there's just most often a twin flame twist <sighs> to it all I, like you'll hear me say a self-love or a twin flame journey is a self-love empowerment journey on steroids if I haven't already said that this time I'm saying it again uh, and it's true, it, it, again, because it just cracks you all the way open. But that's just it, is I now have courage at a whole other level. I mean, it, let's, let's kind of remind ourselves here of the life that I have lived. I've definitely lived on a little side of danger here. A former pimped out drug addicted prostitute, you know, domestic abuse, uh, a hell of a drug dealer he was, you know, I've... I've, I've dabbled in some things, but you know, I was in my 20, I've done some things. Don't worry, I never, I never kill anybody. <laughs> I will kill scorpions though. 
they hurt. <laughs> I digress. I, I catch snakes and I let those go out when they're in my house, but the scorpions, unless you've been stung by a dicolum demon spawn, they die. And I do, I do get a little cackly when I kill a, a scorpion. <sighs> anyway, shutters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I digress. That said, <laughs> it it's kind of you know symbolic. A scorpion that I'm mentioning this is you know a scorpion. It, it symbolizes rebirth, and we have been so deep in this space right now, this cocoon space, and this is a complete transformation. This is that opportunity where the old aspects of ourselves are really being amplified that don't align with the vision that we desire to be created, creating. When you are in union with your twin, when you're living your dream life, are you complaining about shit? Are you disappointed? Are you uh, focusing on the things that aren't working? Are you constantly miserable? Or do you cry your tears, you have your moment, you hold that space, and then you go out and you are in that gratitude. You are loving your life. You're in, in, in again, in gratitude. You are appreciating the blessings, the blissings, the bliss that is your life, right? So in order to have this be your every moment or, you know, your life as a whole, you've got to shift into that now. You've got to start making that what it is. And the reason why we do this is because that gap space of, oh my goodness, so my vision is going to come, it completely turns my life inside out, like in a great way, but it can be so scary. And that's the thing about union with our counterparts is when we have these traumas, these, uh, um, Abusive histories, right? That's what I was looking for. Trauma and abuse, assault. When we have these uh, memories within our bodies, uh, in our souls that need to be healed, that um, that's going to definitely be something that's going to keep us out of that separation. And... Uh, yeah, all of a sudden, that whole trauma thing created a, oh, right? And what, the, what that does also is it makes you to play small. It makes you to live in fear. Fear from allowing yourself to receive love. Fear from being loved. Fear from feeling amazing because you're waiting for the next bad thing to happen. So it is, this is what we're doing. We're breaking out of this memory and shifting into this, we're breaking, we're shifting into breaking down the walls that keep you in this space and shifting into breaking out of and into expanding into this joy, this light, this amazing. This is why it's so important to again, embody, to practice feeling what you would be feeling in any vision that you have union with your twin traveling the world whatever it is because otherwise those fears that are going to come up along the way they most likely will win and that's what happens on our way to union with our twin when they come back right how often has it been that when he comes back you guys start going and then all of a sudden boom here comes the pattern and you do the same thing again you say the same thing, you, you get triggered in the same way. Um, you, you repel him. I have a very, very, very visible vision of a day when I don't remember what it was he said, but oh man, he poked and it hurt such that in my mind, I literally envisioned the Wonder Woman move where she put her arms up and just all that energy just repelled him <laughs> miles away. And I was like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't think I needed to, to, to be that extreme. And I knew instantly that energetically I had just flung him. And he felt that shit. He felt that shit. This is why it's so, again, so important for us to be recognizing that we only can ever and must 
have power over ourselves so that we are not perpetuating the same self-sabotaging behaviors that keep us separate from our desires, separate from our power, separate from our joy. This is what it is to come into union within ourselves. Why you must embody that union energy within that is the ultimate fully powered bat signal for your for your divine counterpart to return it's about you coming back to you wow i know i needed that because it has been a moment i honestly i haven't been manifesting big things over these last well year and a half after things kind of went south a bit shall we say I um, <laughs> yeah you know again this is a, a revitalization of something that I've had for a moment let's see let's see where we are in the twin flame dynamic in terms of where the divine feminine is in her journey I know where I've mentioned right now oh my goodness dance being your own best friend right a feeling Feeling, this is why being your own best friend is so important. Feeling what it truly, genuinely is to be a friend and to have a friend. So that one, you begin to recognize not just the gift of having a friend who genuinely cares for you, but to also be able to honor when a friend embraces you as a friend in their life, to see the value in you that they are embracing as well, right? Just as you see them, the value in them, just as we do with our counterpart, right? And this is what's gonna help you. Remember, you have to be coming home to union within yourself, being your own best friend embodying this embodying that is what it is to really be stepping into your power is to be fully embodied is to be in your truth is to be in your power is to be conscious and aware and intentional with what you're creating it's all connected okay so the better friend you are to yourself the better you can recognize you are as a friend to other people and how and what a gift you are to them just as you see others as a gift to you begin to allow yourself that broader perspective this is what it is to expand your consciousness this is what why what the, the twin flame dynamic is also helping us to achieve is this broader perspective of completely redefining relationships and love and uh, just really turning shit upside down. Because how many, of, how many of you, how many of us were actually taught how to purposely, to authentically be each our own best friends first? Huh? To love yourself first in the way that if you go swimming out to save someone, but you haven't slept for 24 hours and you're exhausted, you have a higher chance that you're both going to drown or you may drown that person dry, fl fl coming back to the, right? You kind of see where I'm going with this. It's about making sure, or if you can't swim, you're not even able to swim and you go swimming out trying to save somebody, but you don't know how to swim yourself right that is what it is to be in such a state of exhaustion as well to have your cup just empty you're not really a benefit to anybody else if you're not a benefit to yourself meaning you're not really being a friend to anybody else if you're not being a true friend to yourself because just as we've been kind of in this space which is helping to carve out this deeper unconditional love and acceptance in the connection it's this uh recognizing that deeper connection within yourself of being your own best friend of loving yourself of being able to then experience this reality at a deeper level 
it is all connected. And this is why right now this dance card or the play card, they've been coming up a lot, this inner child, because with all the changes, that you're in the midst of and all the work that you're doing. And it, it feels exhausting. It feels overwhelming. It, this is why breathing, you know, very simple self-love practices are going to be absolutely beneficial for you. Dancing is one of those. I know for me, especially right now with my dreams and stuff is, you know, organizing things, sorting and going, okay, that's going to go to this person. That's going to go to Goodwill. That I would, I'd love to do a yard sale, but do I really feel like going through all the effort of a yard sale? I don't know. We could see, right? We shall see. That set, it is allowing for that stagnant energy, number one, to be shifted. But number two, it's also allowing, it's facilitating that stagnant energy that's being shifted and, and coming up to be released, to be released when you dance, when you move, when you're not just sitting there stagnant because a stagnant you equals that stagnant energy. So that, that is exactly where the divine feminine is, is really anchoring deeper into that self love depth of being your best friend of literally being your friend feeling what it feels like to be your friend have you ever again have you ever actually allowed yourself to feel what it feels like to be your friend It's so intriguing to me in this moment that that is so poignant for Twin Flame Tuesday. And that's because the foundation of friendship is, is so vital to any lasting relationship. And, and that's a relationship of really any kind. If there's not an underlying connection of some sort, that that is not a lasting relationship. It may be a business associate, but once that business exchange ends, you no longer have a relationship with that individual, but to have an actual relationship with someone that's gonna last, there has to be that foundation of a friendship. But again, if you're abandoning yourself, if you don't know how to be fully accepting and embracing of you, then there will come a time when you are going to find even especially subconsciously that you're not being fully embracing of others. And this includes especially for your counterpart, because anything that you reject in yourself, you will reject in them and anything that you reject in yourself, they will reject in you as well. And it's this vicious cycle. Right? This is why, again, breaking down all the barriers, breaking down to break through into this expansion space. Oh. <sighs> Definitely feeling this one this week. Yeah. Anything more for, oh, well, there's that compassion. I was just going to ask anything more for the divine feminines feminines and that is to have compassion with yourself to acknowledge how much work you are doing you are not going to change overnight okay i just heard rome wasn't built in a day and it's true it's true pyramids weren't not it wasn't built in a day and your transformation is going to happen in a day you didn't get into this space of overwhelm and powerless and, you know, not believing in yourself, you know, feeling not enough. You didn't get into that overnight. Okay. So don't take the burden of believing that you have to break free overnight, that you have to get this friendship shit down overnight, that you have to figure it all out overnight. Because that's certainly not being your own friend. What would you say to someone who is your friend? This is how, this is what compassion is. Is how would you actually speak lovingly, kindly, 
to someone that you love, a young child. This is how you are asking to shift into speaking with yourself, to start to be, again, aware. This has been coming up, as we know, being aware of how you have been treating yourself, how you've not been being your own best friend. So now we're at that space where you're really recognizing this more and more. Now it's time to actually be intentional, in, intentional, intentional at cultivating compassion at being intentionally kind, going a little bit extra further. Like, what can I do for myself right now that would actually, you know, inspire me to feel a little bit better? You know, I'm going for a walk around the block or calling, you know, calling that friend or, you know, listening to that song, dancing, singing. That's, as I've said, what we're, where we are, goddess, is living intentional. A twin flame connection is intentional. It is lived with intention. It's purposeful. Just like our mission is, the unconditional divine source love is intentional in its embrace, in its envelopment, in its divinity. It's, it's compassion itself it's it's not an accident and neither are you and neither is your connection and neither is your journey and neither is anything that actually happens on your journey everything does happen the way it's supposed to happen where you are where you where you are with your counterpart it's you, where you're supposed to be and this is this is that an, another major facet of that compassion piece is again Stop beating up on yourself to stop judging yourself so much and instead to start to praise yourself to how would you speak how would you what would you say actually take some time goddess and journal that out that is a, a doozy for right now with where where we are next on this journey here especially as we find our counterparts you know, in their incommunicado space. Well, this is for each of us to develop better communication with ourselves, right? This is that twin flame mirror gift is if he's not communicating with me and or we don't have the best communication at times, then, ooh, that's telling me that I don't have the best communication with myself. And that is a facet of that communication is being, or a facet of compassion is being able to, and actually communicating with yourself about your needs, your wants, your desires, your dreams, your visions. And there's been a lot of this whole grounding thing. This is also the dance. Dancing is, is very grounding, but grounding yourself in nature even just going out and hugging a tree, putting your feet on the grass, having plants, you know, having being surrounded by plants in your house. That's one of my things that I love. And that's one of my challenges as I was personally with, with my vision is, oh my gosh, I have this whole gorgeous collection of plants now and I'm gonna have to, they're gonna have to find a foster home. And that coming from someone, the reason why it's such a, such a, a thing for me is because I used to believe I had a black thumb that I couldn't keep anything alive and I have a dozen pots of plants three two four six eight ten yeah mm-hmm pretty much doesn't it's it's amazing but all of that the biggest piece of that that I, I obviously that is coming up for me to share with you is that I used to believe, even though I wasn't constantly saying it, but I did, I used to believe that I had a black thumb. Well, I stopped feeding that story. I didn't exactly say that I'm good at keeping plants alive, because I do still experience some challenges, some growing pains, okay? But I stopped watering the weeds of the belief that I have a, a, a black thumb. And eventually, 
I didn't even notice it. That's why I say eventually, because it wasn't something I was intentionally manifesting, but eventually it got to where I was having a plant that was alive for a while. And it's one of those, I believe they're pathos. I believe they're, they're called, that's what they're called. Uh, and see, I don't even know all my plants. I know I think I have a spider plant. That's one of them. One that keeps propagating on me. Anyway, I digress. Two, I will tell you right now, Goddess, that having these plants in my environment, nurturing them, talking with them, they are so grounding. So if you are in a place where you don't have a lot of nature, get a plant, not a fake one either okay there are so many easy to care for plants okay and like i said these like i, I believe again pathos is what they're called they are very easy to grow and, and 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 keep alive i'm telling you and they're easy to propagate as well and they're gorgeous just they they'll grow they the one that i had to yeah i used to have here um yeah they all needed a little more light it was growing pains i digress Whew. All right, do we have anything more? Oh, well, there, as I've already was saying, taking delight in the blessings of your journey. Right? Taking delight in the gifts of you, in the gift itself of you. In fact, that's something else, Goddess, is to, for this Twin Flame Tuesday, because we, you wanna focus on your counterpart, but here is one of the things to be focusing on you is looking at all the ways that oh i'm hearing elizabeth barrett browning how do i love thee let me count the ways i love thee to the depth breadth and height that my soul can reach goddess make a list of all the things to love about yourself Even if you like, just like, put it on the list. What would you say about yourself if you were your best friend and actually allow yourself? And if you are really finding it challenging in that, then ask a few friends to describe you in three, three to five words, what would they say? What would they say? That's just a, a little bit, I mean, just even a fraction of what we would be doing in my Empowered with Rochelle All Access. It's an All Access Pass where we have Zoom group sessions. And this is a whole new structure. I have never had it set up this way that I'm just starting to launch here. Uh, Empowered with Rochelle All Access Pass that includes the all of the live group events from the goddess parties to the manifesting moon rituals, which there's two each time that that process is happening, which isn't every month. Uh, it's for the full moon ritual the or, and the new moon ritual and a whole process. Then there are Zoom group sessions, coaching sessions that you bring your challenges to. We also have actual lessons where you get downloads, you get video replays. You also become part of a private Telegram group where you get real-time, deeper support, guidance, resources, where there's more time and energy devoted to those of you in that group. And that is to really, truly make sure that you are fully empowered with Rochelle. And part of this all access pass also includes access to my video courses. That's the other thing, why it's an all access pass. I really invite you to check out these details in full at empowermentexperiences.com slash EWR. There will be a maximum number of spots so that I can continue to serve at the capacity that I desire and, and love to serve in such a container. I had to create boundaries in my free group. I was constantly draining myself. Well, that just shows you exactly how I am. So, that said, shall we continue with, and the question that I'm actually hearing with this is, 
in what ways can the divine feminine be shining her light in what ways is she shining her light if she were to uh take this action or um be in this awareness that's interesting i'm like thank you okay Ooh, to trust your path trust your path goddess that's that's very much where your power is if you knew you would be supported what would you do if you knew that you were capable of anything, if you knew that you deserved anything that you desired, anything that you wished for was yours, what would it be? What would this vision look like? What would these multiple visions look like? Because that's the thing with whenever it's scripting out, you know, your life is you have all these different facets of your life that you would like. That's something else is my creative clarity journaling kit and course takes you through just 11 facets that you could cover in terms of getting clarity because here's the thing is when you have that clarity about how, what it feels like to be your own best friend clarity about what it feels like to be in that vision that you desire to be experiencing clarity is then yours to show you how to get to where you're going the the path doesn't feel so littered just littered period it doesn't feel so littered and i know that especially in the beginning of this twin flame journey it feels like a fucking landfill right like a garbage heap of so much conflicting information and then at the same time you're in excruciating pain you don't know what's happening to you it doesn't make sense you just want to you just want you want to undo the whole thing you just want to make it stop. You want to figure it out and nothing makes sense. And, but she said that, but wait a minute. But then they said that and those though, uh, I get it, goddess. When you have clarity on who you are, this is again, back to this being your own best friend. When you have clarity on who you are, to especially one of the templates that we are definitely here to rewrite is the one about changing yourself for someone else, right? S uh, s becoming who they want you to be. That isn't actually you. It's one thing if you meet someone and you fall in love with, you know, something that they, they do or they have, like meeting my counterpart. I love some, oh my God, I love samosas. I love Indian food now. I love, like it's one of my all time favorite foods is Indian food just because you know whatever may happen with it doesn't mean i'm going to stop loving indian food right so that's one thing it's but when you are actually changing your personality especially if it is in a disempowering manner that to, in order to make someone else happy that is that is definitely not being your own best friend that is not love that is not uh that's not healthy Okay, and that's one of the dynamics that we have to break. It's it's the people pleasing. The I will I will be this way, just don't leave me. Okay. Now, again, I reiterate if obviously if someone's being extremely negative or toxic, that requires a change. My point is when that change being asked of you is disempowering and it makes you to feel small and uh, dimming your light it makes you to compromise your worth that is not okay but how can you know that you're compromising your own boundaries your own self-respect your own worth if you don't know who you are if you don't know what your boundaries are if you don't know what it feels like to be your own best friend you don't actually trust yourself So when you can be embodying this and allowing yourself to expand into this vision and allow yourself to have this dream, to shift into this true, authentic, empowered version of yourself, knowing that you're fully trusted, what does that look like? I mean, talk about being your own best friend. I mean, right, sister? Talk about being your own best friend. And your counterpart, this is, he's doing what he's doing right now. Like I said, there's, 
We already know that he's been being kept away from you. This is why for those of you who may have open communication and you may have been texting and he's not replying, but he's reading them. This is why I've, I've reached a point of just saying, you know, for, for my audience where we've been and it's, it's recognizing that you're just giving your energy. So pull that back and instead of commenting and sending messages without that reciprocity, that energetic exchange, that flow happening, and instead you're just draining energy, it's time to call that back and instead invest that energy in something that is more empowering, something that expands you, something that lifts you up rather than keeping you focused over here on, oh my God, he's not replying to me. He's not giving me attention. Oh my gosh, I feel, oh my gosh, horrible, horrible. And you start to feel worse and worse and worse. Believe me, I know, <laughs> I know. Instead, pivot and invest your energy over here, creating what you're creating. What is going to empower you to feel better? What empowers you to feel empowered in your life? Okay, be your own friend. So who or what is triggering you? And this is, we know your, we know your counterpart is, we know this, this is a given. And this is why I am absolutely certain that one of the biggest triggers is, is this whole thing of he's not communicating with you, right? He's not giving you that attention. He's not validating you. But this is when you're being asked to actually be validating yourself by embodying into your power. Because when you are fully in your power, you don't need anything or anybody to complete you. You are complete in and of yourself. And the thing with the twin flame journey is yes, you are a, a perceived half, but you're a whole half. You are complete and whole in and of, your, of yourself. And so is your counterpart, but you are two whole halves of a greater whole. But that's the thing is that you are still whole and complete. And at some point we come back together into that greater whole. However, you've still got to be embodied as whole. Be, and this is, this is that being your own best friend. I'm really feeling like we are going to definitely oh, want to hear what the, the divine masculine has to say. So that's, you know, for the divine feminine. And this is intriguing. I never personally never saw my, <laughs> my messages going this way. I am again on this, we're all on this evolutionary space and we must just surrender to the journey. We get to co-create and contribute based on what we desire, but we have to allow for the journey to unfold to get there. And that is, is, requires evolution. It requires change. It requires a, a transformation of some kind or else if you were already the version of yourself that you needed to be, to be living that life that you desire, you would be. You're the version of yourself that's living the life that you're living now. So you've got to align yourself with what you desire to be living. And that means to allow for that change to happen, allow for the unfolding. And, and also for, that's been the thing about releasing the perception of our, our divine masculine, the 3D perception, because otherwise you keep him in a box and he's not able to actually change, to come back that whole new transformed version, just like you are undergoing this transformation. So let's, let's find out. This is, like I said, I never, Imagine especially these these cards in particular becoming our divine masculine messenger messengers shall we say um, First and foremost, we have this card that popped up, uncertainty I just don't know baby, you know, he's he's very much feeling The walls closing in around him He he knows what he wants to a certain extent, but he just, he doesn't know how. He doesn't know how to let go. He doesn't know how to follow his soul. He doesn't know how to embody and line up with his visions. He only knows what the matrix is telling him. And this is creating so much confusion for him. And this is going to be why he keeps his distance from you because you, you're the one piece that doesn't fit yet. You're the one 
that he wants. You're that, that entire puzzle, but with the obligations that he has, he feels as though he has to stay at the, in the puzzle that he's living, even though it doesn't quite make sense. He's really unsure about what to choose, what to say, what to think, what to feel. It's complete and utter chaos in so many ways for him right now. He does not know how to be his own best friend. And this is going to be very much this, this mirroring why you're being asked, Divine Feminine, to be embodying and be, be working on this being intentionally your own best friend. Because remember, the more you love yourself, the more of a friend you are to yourself, the more energetically that's going to create a shift in him to start to ease some of that off of him so that he can break free. Because this is all he wants. He just wants that freedom. He's just, again, so uncertain as to how to achieve that, but he doesn't understand that how is not his place. He thinks that if he creates the vision and he has the vision, that it won't happen. And so there's no point in having the vision. And that's the masculine energy. That's the wounded masculine energy. This is as well in you, goddess. So when, we're, when I'm talking about this divine masculine mes message, it's being conscious that it's the mirroring as well. We have our mirror card here. So this message is being mirrored in you as well. You have to be the one to create the vision and get in that energy and then follow the path, the unknown path unfolding, evolving you into that version of yourself that is living the life that you would like to be living. And for the divine masculine, he can't for the life of him put his finger on it. And he has too much pride to come to you. Because He knows that you're damn good at this. He knows that you know things that he doesn't know. You lead him. You lead him into this. You are the one that opened up his world into believing that this was even possible. But you see what happens when we experience that sort of power, when we experience that sort of reality, and it's unfamiliar. That which is unfamiliar is scary to the ego. And so the ego shuts down. This is why in the 5D realm, the Divine Masculine is asking you to lead, to step up and, and embrace being the leader to acknowledge that that's what you are. And that right now, this is, is where your work is. Being your own best friend so that Divine Masculine can finally start to be his own best friend. He is taken by your beauty. And this is, this is a lot of the reason that keeps him away. Your power, your beauty, because beauty is so often translated as power. Right. And for him, you are a powerful, beautiful goddess. And he just doesn't feel worthy. Again, he doesn't know what it is to be his own best friend. 
and he will work himself to death the rest of his life until he allows himself to see that he is worthy, he is deserving, and he is good enough. And the same with you, Goddess. Remember the mirror. So it's time to start seeing that beauty. Like, again, being your friend, seeing the beauty in you. Manifesting with self-love the dreams that you have, allowing for those dreams to flow in. That's this water spirit, allowing your dreams to flow in. You start manifesting like crazy in your reality. You, you detach from your counterpart, let him do his thing while you do yours. You're not chasing, you're, you recognize that when, when divine timing happens, which means when you are fully aligned, when you're in the place that you need to be at for that intersection to actually take place where he's in the right place and you're in the right place. But you're doing your thing and as you are raising your vibration, you're illuminating that path for him to follow. And soon you both are lined up with divine timing and those dreams manifest, they flow in. But you, you got this goddess. Leading the way. So let's see what we have for our angel numbers today. We have two of them, 432 and number 14. Where is it? Oh my goodness, my, uh, my phone to look it up is all the way over here. <laughs> Let me grab this, shall we? Okay, all right. I'm intrigued, so 14. Um, just to share 14 for me personally is the date in January is the date of transition for my good Patrick AV, but it's also the date Arizona time that I stepped foot for the first time ever in my life in India to meet my twin flame angel number 14 change is imminent. Oh my goodness. This is why why we're talking about embodying this because change is going to happen and you ease ease the pain of it the growing pains of it when you are doing that work embodying who that version of you is embodying it's it's the it's the way of kind of like neo in the matrix when they were plugging in those different computer programs and he had to be in the program he had to be in the energy of that and then he took that out in onto the battlefield so you are being asked to program yourself to download this programming of who you are when you are in this and download it now so that when you are in it you have all the skills already honed you you see the connection here that's what's happening be flexible be adaptable be careful what you wish for all right, prepare a harmonious environment for major changes ahead. So that is about you uh, creating within yourself a grounded, a compassionate, an easeful experience uh, that's going to help to, well, ease <laughs> these imminent changes. Big changes are happening, huge like huge I, I'm, I'm seeing julia robertson pretty woman vivian when she went into the store she's like uh ah, big mistake big huge four three two uh path of leaving the old ways and embracing the new oh my goodness i just love this stuff take it slow and steady like the turtle who knows there is no race at all because again you are where you're supposed to be the only aspect of yourself that is obsessed with this time thing is your ego because for the ego, time does run out. All right, so allow yourself to recognize that for yourself. That 
I am where I am and I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be because if I were supposed to be anywhere else other than where I am, I would be, okay? <laughs> Bring yourself back into balance and alignment. It's time for rest, relaxation, and restoration. Uh, cultivate greater appreciation for yourself. Additional self-care time is needed. Be extra gentle with yourself. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. So here we are, goddess. This is what we have for this week's Twin Flame Tuesday is to begin now actively being conscious of the depth to which you are embodied as your own friend by actually allowing yourself to see what it is to be your friend through the eyes of someone else because this is going to help you to see yourself through the eyes of your divine counterpart as his higher self even more clearly which in turn is going to amplify that bat signal to bring him home. <sighs> and that's it. That's all I have to say. I am here for you, goddess. I love to hear feedback from my videos, what, what resonated with you, any aha moments. I am looking to be doing a possible giveaway, and I'm saying possible, I gotta work out the details, uh, coming up soon, so make sure you're subscribed and notifications are on uh, to this channel, and I'm telling you, you wanna develop a signature because that's gonna be coming, and what I mean by signature is when you comment on any creator's videos, you are supporting them in the algorithm, the great land of, of the great jungle land of <laughs> a social media world. And just by simply commenting a signature emoji set, like I have one of those personally, and that's a set of like, it could be your same emoji, it could be multiple different emojis. But simply by commenting and liking videos, doing those little things, and of course being subscribed, you give so much support to someone else's vision and dreams. And it doesn't cost you but a couple moments of your time. And I thank you for sharing so much of your time with me, dear goddess. I understand the priceless value of that. And I am truly honored. I am so grateful for you. And I am here to remind you that the power your power, it is in your hands. The power to create any life that you desire and you fucking deserve it. Because that power has always been inside you. Namaste.